Hello. Let's approach another example, but this time I'm not going to give you an algebraic expression for a function. Instead, we're going to approach everything in a graphical manner. So, starting with a graph of a function f of x, we will determine the graph of the first derivative and the graph of the second derivative, and all based solely on the graph of the function. At the first sight, it may look like an impossible task, but you'll see it's actually very simple. So, without any further ado, let's uh, approach this example on which I already gave you uh, the curve of this function f of x, as you can see sketched on the graph. Based on the knowledge that you already have from the advanced functions course, you can easily identify this as a representation of a cubic function. This is the kind of information that you need to know, although the example doesn't explicitly specify it. So that's one thing we know, and um, the other thing that we know is the significance of the derivative for a function. Since we approach it in a graphical manner, the significance of the derivative of this function would be the slope of the tangent to the graph of this function. That is what the first derivative represents. So, because I only have the curve for our function, nothing else, when I'm looking on the graph of this function and I'm trying to uh, analyze the behavior for the tangent to the graph, well, I can see that I can identify two particular points where this tangent has a value of zero. That is easy to identify. These two points, which I'm highlighting in red, are the points where the slope of the tangent is zero. I even sketched the tangent for you to see that a tangent at those points is indeed a horizontal line, which makes the slope zero. In any other point, the slope has either a positive or a negative value. On a second graph, where I'm going to represent the derivative of f of x, so let me sketch the x-axis and the y-axis I'm going to maintain it the same, aligned with the previous y-axis. I can transfer these uh, points on the second graph, the graph of our first derivative, and place the corresponding points on the x-axis because that's where the first derivative is going to take values of zero, at the same x-coordinates uh, like the points above. So we already determined where the graph of the derivative of f of x is going to intersect the x-axis. So that's very important to know. And as I mentioned earlier, we started with a cubic function, f of x is cubic, based on the shape of the curve. Therefore, from a cubic function, we know that by derivating a polynomial function, we're going to decrease the degree of that function by 1. So we expect the first derivative of this function to be a quadratic function. In other words, its graph is going to be a parabola. Since we know that this parabola intersects the x-axis in two points, and we identify those points on the x-axis already, all we need to determine is if this parabola opens up or down. That's the most we can do. And uh, that's going to be a very simple task to do, because if we look on the graph of the function now, starting from the left to the first point on this portion, you see that the tangent has always a positive slope. In other words, on the graph of the first derivative, that branch of the parabola is going to be above zero, because it has positive values, as we see from the graph above. Now, if I'm looking from the second point to the right, in the same manner, I can determine that uh, the slope of any tangent from this point on is going to be positive again. So, on the graph of the first derivative, we're going to have the part of the parabola is going to be also above the x-axis, positive values. And uh, lastly, between these two points, on the interval between the first and the second point, if I uh, sketch any tangent to the graph of this function, I can see that uh, the slope of the tangent is going to have negative values. In other words, on the graph of the first derivative, I'm going to have negative values, and because I have to unite these two points, obviously, I'm going to uh, create a closed curve just to finalize the parabola that I know I'm going to have. This is basically how you determine the graph of a derivative, identifying the points where the slope is zero on the function 
to identify the points of intersection with the x-axis for the derivative. Also using the information about what happens with the polynomial function through the process of differentiation. We know we decrease the degree by 1 every time we differentiate the function and knowing what are the basic shapes for uh, functions we can easily sketch the graph of a function uh, just like here. But this uh, example is not finished because we want to also determine the graph of the second derivative. Now hopefully you got the idea. I'm going to apply exactly the same principle only that I'm gonna take the function f prime of x, this green curve, and I'm gonna analyze what is this curve having a, a tangent with a slope of zero. It's only the vertex of that parabola where the tangent is going to be zero. So corresponding to this point on a separate graph where I'm gonna sketch the second derivative or in other words in this case basically this is going to be the first derivative of this first derivative right because we always approach these derivatives uh, one step at a time so it's each time it's basically the derivative of another function and uh, in this case that function it happens to be a derivative of our uh, initial function f of x but since we identify this point as being the only point on our uh, green curve where the slope of the tangent is going to be zero, then that's exactly the point on the graph of the second derivative of f of x where the graph intersects the x-axis. So I'm going to place a point on the x-axis on this last uh, coordinate system. And because it was a parabola or a quadratic uh, function, through differentiation we're going to end up with a linear function. So we know it's going to be just one line. Now analyzing the the parabola from the left from minus infinity to this uh, red point to the vertex the slope is getting only negative values. In other words the line that represents the sketch for the second derivative is going to be placed somewhere underneath the x-axis and is going to continue uh, with uh, positive slopes so the line continues above the x-axis for any x value that uh, is to the right of the vertex. These are the key points that we need to identify to be able to sketch the graphs of derivatives starting from simply just the graph of the function. Now I'd like to uh, include here another example uh, with the same graphical approach, but this time a little bit different. These are typical examples that you're going to encounter in your uh, homework, in your tests, and uh, I really think uh, it's important for you to understand uh, things from this uh, visual perspective as well. So since this was the first example, let me take a second example in which I'm going to give you the graph of three functions. I'm even using the same colors. And uh, the task is to identify which of these uh, curves represents the original function, which represents the graph of the first derivative, and which represents the graph of the second derivative. That's all you have to do. A different uh, spin to the same problem. Now that you understand what you are looking for when a problem like this is presented to you, let's try to analyze these functions first of all and see if we can identify any type of information that will help us uh, decide which curve represents which function. So we know that the original function has to have the most inflection points because with every differentiation process we're gonna have a polynomial function of a lesser degree than the original function. Therefore I can see that the blue curve has quite a lot of inflection points and the purple uh, curve has the least amount of inflections. So I can right away have an idea where to start, but we cannot assume the other curves are implicitly first and the second derivative of this function without analyzing any further. So what I can do is just like before, I'm going to look on the graph of f of x and identify those points where the slope of the tangent is going to be zero. And I 
can identify these four points. We can very clearly see the tangent has a slope of zero in each of these points. Now all I have to do is identify on any of the other two curves, green or purple, and see if exactly for the same x-coordinates any of those curves is intersecting the uh, x-axis. And as a matter of fact, you can see how the green curve intersects x-axis exactly at the same x-coordinates. So there is no doubt anymore that the green curve represents the first derivative of this function f of x. And now, since there is only one uh, curve left, again, you can make a conjecture that that should be the second derivative, but could be gen just any other function. So let's verify that is indeed the second derivative of this uh, function. Looking on the green curve, I'm going to identify once again all those points where the slope of the tangent is zero, and I can identify three points as I place them on the graph. The purple curve is intersecting the x-axis exactly at those x-coordinates. So once again, I can be certain that uh, the purple curve represents the derivative of the function represented in green, which was the first derivative of f of x. Therefore, the purple function represents the second derivative of f of x. These are two types of examples in which you can uh, work with first and second derivative in a graphical fashion and are very common examples uh, that you may encounter. Of course, the more you practice, uh, the better it is because there are all sorts of variations to this kind of uh, concept. But as long as you understand what you are uh, looking for in this type of problems, it should be very simple. And um, I hope you find this example helpful as well. And thanks for watching.